Are there pharmaceutical drugs that reverse or stop dementia? I wish there were. Uh, there are two drugs used by neurologists for Alzheimer's disease, dementia, and sometimes they use them for mild cognitive impairment, kind of off-label. Uh, Donepezil is by far the most common drug used. And it has, according to a recent study in a gerontology journal, little effect on the treatment. And this study looked at also the side effects, which were an increased 76% of vomiting and 62% of diarrhea with this particular drug. So it does tend to help some people for a short while, but I think the key thing to remember is that it does not slow or stop neurodegeneration. It doesn't slow or stop the disease. It hides the symptoms for a little while while neurodegeneration continues. The other drug is memantine, and it has even a smaller effect on memory or cognition. And some of the side effects like heart failure are just heartbreaking. I would like to add that the side effects of donepezil of vomiting and diarrhea are a little bit dose dependent. And what we saw in the clinic was that if people were taking five milligrams of the drug, they had very little side effects. But and very little effects, They had too. little effects. So the people who were taking larger doses uh, were having more stimulation, but more discomfort as well. You say the principal cause of brain cell death is oxidation. How do we prevent oxidation? It's kind of a two-pronged effect. We would like to get more antioxidants into the brain, easy to do, and we would like to not eat a lot of things that create more oxidation and more inflammation, which also increases oxidation, because oxidation damages the delicate cell membranes of brain cells, which after all have many of these polyunsaturated fatty acids, the long chain one with lots of opportunities for damage. Some of the antioxidants that we used in the study were from food, some were from supplement, and some were minerals to support our own inside endogenous antioxidant systems. What foods or nutrients are ideal for memory? Well, I'd like to. Okay. One thing that we're looking at is foods that are high in the antioxidants. What we want is vitamins A, C, E, selenium, zinc, uh, copper, manganese, and uh, the latter minerals help us create our own antioxidants. And those are found in uh, fruits and vegetables and whole grains nuts and seeds, mm -hmm. and beans. So if you're getting a whole plant diet, you're really addressing a lot of those antioxidant needs. Now you're not going to be getting those antioxidants if you're eating a lot of red meat or even chicken or... Any animal a, product, any basically, fish. is gonna be extremely low in antioxidants, but also high in inflammatory substances that create more oxidation. And one example is endotoxins, and so when you have an animal that died, it has bacteria. We all know this, it has to be cooked. The bacteria is killed. But the leftover shells of the bacteria, coupled with the excess saturated fat, tend to get into our bloodstream. And when they do, our immune systems recognize this as a bacterial infection. And so increase inflammation in the bloodstream, which is also translated into the brain, for a period of hours after a meal that includes these animal products, and this is a way to kill off brain cells rather than to protect them. You just mentioned um, foods that are bad for our brains and our memory and, and, and might contribute to dementia. Are there any others that we should know about? Uh, saturated fats are something we really want to consider. The American Heart Association recommends uh, now it's 5% of our daily calories as saturated fats which if you're eating a normal 2,000 calorie day, amounts to about 11 grams. So if you start looking at the saturated fat amounts in foods, you'd be amazed at how quickly it adds up. Uh, half a can of Spam, I don't usually eat Spam and it's been a long time, but in Hawaii where we live, it's one of the five major food groups, <laughs> Spam, everything. Uh, a half a can is 18 grams of saturated fat. Tell now, them about coconut oil. I, I, <laughs> give me a minute, honey. <laughs> um, so the, we've met people in the clinic who eat two cans of Spam at breakfast. Oh, mercy. So they're getting way, you know, 36, 72 grams of saturated fat 
at breakfast and they're only supposed to have 11 per day. Some of the other numbers are uh, uh, butter's only four grams. Well, three pats of butter adds up to eight grams of saturated fat, so you're already almost at your limit with butter. So don't eat anything else that day, right? Hardly. Uh, I'm going to let you do the coconut oil. The um, plant-based foods of beans, nuts, seeds, uh, vegetables, and fresh fruits are very low in saturated fats for the most part, and you can eat all you want without suffering. Now, the well, problem is... They are low, but on the other hand, when we look at a plant-based diet, you already are automatically getting a little bit here and there to the point where you're getting 4% of your calories every day, and you don't want to go over six. So you really, there isn't any room for animal fat in the diet or coconut oil, which two tablespoons is 24 grams of saturated fat. Remember, 11's your maximum for a day. And yes, they are the same saturated fats. There are three that clog arteries, myristic, lauric, and palmitic acids. And those three are well known to clog arteries and of coconut oil, they make up 65% of coconut oil. So you can see that coconut oil is really a hazard and the correct term actually would be coconut fat since it's solid at room temperature. But marketing coconut fat is a lot tougher than marketing coconut oil. Well, it's tricky because it's gotten so popular right now, even among people who have plant-based diets, they love to use coconut fat for everything. They make chocolates at home with it and stir fry, but it is adding up and overloading their saturated fat. That's the one in the animal. And then the saturated in the fat plant kingdom. That's that high. goes into your body, increases cholesterol in the body. And also when you're not getting any antioxidants, which coconut oil does not have antioxidants, a lot of other oils and oily foods like nuts and seeds do have antioxidants. The coconut oil is one of the few that doesn't have any vitamin E to speak of. When the saturated fat gets into your arteries, it increases cholesterol and arterial plaque. Arterial plaque is a huge problem with thinking ability in the brain. The carotid artery in the neck gets clogged up. You've probably heard of relatives who've had 60, 70, 80% clogging of their carotid arteries. And this has been shown to reduce blood flow to the entire brain lowering our memory, lowering our ability to think, and actually killing off brain cells. Because the progress of vascular dementia is from tiny strokes, where a little bit of this plaque will break off, it'll stick in an artery, arterial, or capillary of the brain, and kill that branch of the brain, eating up a little memory, eating up the ability to navigate, eating up the ability to even care for ourselves. So over time, vascular dementia eats the brain. However, if we keep our saturated fat low, then we can stop this process and even reverse it. It's been well shown that by keeping your saturated fats down to under 6% of calories, that you really can, that's under 11 grams per day, you really can reverse atherosclerotic plaque and open up the arteries and help your thinking. In one study, the doctors used a stent in the neck to open up just the carotid artery, okay? They're doing three inches of 24,000 miles of our <laughs> circulatory system, and yet they got a 7% boost on memory and thinking just from that, just getting a little more blood to the brain. So this is crucial. 